Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I have a very special guest with me. Uh, her name is Kelly. But you know what? Let me allow you to introduce yourself. Who are you? What do you do? Tell us. My name is Kelly Smith, and I'm a realtor with EXP Realty. Okay. And EXP, what what is that? EXP is actually a cloud brokerage. So we're actually based out of Roseville, but there's plenty of us throughout Amador County, and I'm actually on Team Becky Melville. So there's a plethora of us. So if you use an EXP agent up here in Amador County, you're not just getting one agent, you're getting an entire team. That's the best part about EXP. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like it. So yeah. the reason why I wanted to bring you here is because um, you seem to have a very grounded sense of the home buying process. <laughs> and uh, for first time home buyers, especially, it, it's a very daunting thing. What do I do? Who do I talk to? What are the steps? What can mm -hmm. I expect? How much money am I going to spend? When am I going to spend that money? There's a whole bunch. Yeah. And it can be very daunting. So really quickly, can you kind of give us the first, you know, overview and then we're going to dive in what it actually is. The first step I would say of the home buying process is to find a lender and get pre-approved. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I would say find a lender, get pre-approved. They're going to be able to pull your credit, see what you need to do to lower your um, debt to income ratio, what we need to do to get your credit score up, and then figure out what exactly you can be approved for financially based on your income and or your spouse's income together. Okay. So after the pre-approval process, mm -hmm. what is a buyer looking at? Are they, Is that when they get to go out and just go crazy, look for the house? At that point, uh, yeah, you could you should find a realtor in the area that you're looking in. I know one. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in Amador County. Yeah. Uh, find a realtor in the area that you're looking in. Let them know what you've been pre-approved for. Um, give them your pre-approval letter. Let them get your lender's contact information so everyone can get on the same page. And then you can start looking at properties that you might be interested in. Okay. And then after you kind of do the home hunting, you've given the pre-approval letter. I, I like this house. What do I do mm -hmm. now, Kelly? Now you would say, okay, I think we want to go ahead and put an offer in on this house. At this point, it's not really about negotiations or I only want to give them this offer if they'll do X, Y, Z. Right now, it's just about the financials of the offer, meaning how much money you actually want to offer for the property and what the terms are, meaning we'll go into escrow X, Y, Z days after approval or my inspections will have 17 days to get taken care of instead of 21. It's the okay. terms of the offer itself basically. so okay so this is where things get negotiated they get hashed out between mm -hmm. realtor realtor buyer seller exactly and, and all that stuff yep. which is why a realtor is extremely important yes you mentioned some things that confuse me and i'm sure confuse <laughs> others. um okay so you've made an offer let's say the offer is ex accepted after mm -hmm. that so you have pre-approval then you have the house hunt and then you have the offer what yep. comes after an accepted offer after your offer is accepted you celebrate <laughs> and then yep. you put in your earnest money deposit. This is kind of like um, what you would consider a security deposit if you're renting. This is basically a good faith deposit saying we are interested in the property. We do want to move forward. And then once you, that money goes in, you'll start your inspection period. Usually that's 17 days you have to get the inspections done and start sending in requests for repairs based on what your inspections find. Okay. And now I believe the term for those kinds of time periods are contingencies. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that get, gets thrown a lot, a, around does. a lot. For yeah. me, I always hear loan contingency. Yeah. So um, we'll, we'll kind of circle back to it, but those are important things. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you open escrow. C can you explain a little bit what escrow is yeah. at that point? Because I know there's three different kinds of escrow. Yeah. What escrow are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about the escrow in terms of your financials and the actual paperwork for this entire situation. So your escrow is a neutral party that basically takes documents from the buyer's agent and the seller's agent, puts them all together as a neutral party. So there is no conflict of interest as to who sees what and who gets what and who's holding what. It's a neutral party that holds the money, the paperwork, all the important documents. So nobody else has to worry about it. And all the seller and the buyer can focus on just the transaction. Yeah. And within that transaction, escrow has been opened. You have this time period. Let's, 
30 days is a very traditional mm -hmm. number. Yes. Um, what happens after you open escrow? Is it just kind of like you wait for the time to fizzle out? What's going on in that time? Well, in that time, that's when you will get your title report that will say um, how the, the property is currently held, if it's if it's paid for outright, if there's still a loan on the property, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, that will be sent over to you to review. If there's any liens on the property, you'll know about that. Um, that's a very important document for the buyer to review so you know exactly what you're getting into before you actually make the purchase. And all of this stuff happens within that 17 days. So if for some reason you see something that's a red flag or you're not interested anymore, you have the opportunity to go ahead and say, you know what, we don't, we're not interested in this anymore. Gotcha, so that's kind of like the inspection period yep. for the buyers and, and also the sellers mm -hmm. ultimately. Yes. Um, so they can go through that. So we got pre-approval, we got house mm -hmm. hunt, we got uh, offers, we got escrow, yep. and then we just did, a, I guess, inspection period. Yes. Um, so what comes after that? After the inspection period is over, is if, if everybody has come to a um, agreement as to who's paying for what repairs or if there's going to be any credits in lieu of repairs at the close of escrow, then you go through your escrow term and hopefully that's when they would reach out to Noor and go, hey, what is the loan looking like? Can we close this early? Like everyone's in agreement, we're ready to go. Can we maybe expedite the 30, bump up the 30 days to 25 or 20? And hopefully that would get you to your closing date. Yeah, and and ultimately that's the last step yes. is closing. So assuming that's your the, goal. <laughs> yeah. assuming the financing side goes well, which typically if you do the pre-approval at the mm -hmm. beginning properly and uh, your lender hopefully me, does a good job on vetting things at the beginning and looking around the corners, there shouldn't be any issue with the financing. So after the financing, you get into closing. Mm -hmm. um, what's involved in closing? Because a lot of people think that once escrow you know, gets all the stuff and the financing is done, they bought a house. There are a couple more steps, aren't there? There are a couple more steps. So towards the end of escrow, you'll do your fine what it's called is a final verification of property. So you'll go through, it's usually within the five days before your actual closing date and you walk through and make sure the property is in the same condition that it was when you originally saw it. So there's no new major holes in the wall. There's no new bright pink paint on the wall. There's nothing crazy <laughs> that you need to, will now need to take care of that wasn't there when you first originally saw the property. So it kind of gives you the peace of mind that everything is the way it was. This is the house that we want to purchase. It's kind of like your final walkthrough before you move in. Uh Basically. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. So you do that final walkthrough, say mm -hmm. everything is A-OK. -okay. What happens past that? After that's done, as long as escrow has all of their documents, they'll call you for your signing, which is the fun part. You get to go in and sign about 100 pages, <laughs> 100 pages of documents. So, yeah. um, And then you'll get your keys. Yeah. And, and then after the keys, there's a couple of things that get buttoned up between title, mm -hmm. escrow, and the lender um, and realtors. You know, we got to send it out for funding, which means the lender pays for all of this to take place. And then once it's funded, we go into recording, which means uh, the escrow company, the title company, is gonna take all of the documentation, give it to the county, the state, whoever needs it, and record that, okay, Kelly has now officially bought this house for this much, mm -hmm. it is hers, she's on title, here are all the people that are listed along with it. Yep. So uh, officially, you know, it's feel, it feels good to get the keys. It does. But officially, after recording is when you become a homeowner. Exactly. In the eyes of Uncle Sam. Yep. So, yep. Um, let's jump a little bit deeper. And what I'd like to do, actually, um, a little counterintuitive, is work backwards. Sure. Because everyone remembers the beginning parts. Get pre-approved. Yeah. Go house hunting. Yep. And then it's gone. The fun parts. <laughs> yeah. So, let's do the not-so-fun parts first. So, we'll talk about closing. Uh, off the top of your head, are there any kinds of things that um, happen at closing that usually a lot of people don't understand there like i said before there's a lot of paperwork and when you go to actually sign it they're going to go oh this is the inspection report you already saw this is the title report that you already saw yeah. it's a lot of duplicate documents so my one recommendation is if you're in closing and there's something you go i don't I don't know what this means, or I never saw this. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Ask the questions. That's what either your realtor's there for, or your, your escrow officer's there for, your title. 
ask the question that you need to ask because this isn't like just purchasing something at the supermarket. This is yeah. a huge step. One of the you biggest need steps to you, know. Yeah. 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 And it's the same thing. Even to reiterate something beautifully, you said that most of those documents are going to be documents that you've seen mm -hmm. throughout the process before, even on the lender side. So if you see a document that you've never seen before, it's either some sort of disclosure that comes at closing or it's perhaps something you haven't seen before. So asking questions is absolutely a fantastic thing. I wish more people did it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as you said, this is one of the biggest purchases someone's going to make in their life. Yep. They better ask questions and not feel scared to do it. Absolutely. And take your time. There's no, there shouldn't be a rush to find the perfect house and just buy it and be done with it. Take your time because yeah. this, again, this isn't something you can just return, you know? Yeah. It's, you, you're going to have it for a while. It's going to be an investment. So make sure that you have all the answers. You know what you're getting into. Do your inspections. Ask all the questions. Do what you got to do to make sure you're secure in purchasing that home. Yeah. So we have the closing side. Now mm -hmm. we're going to backtrack towards the final uh, financing side of things. I'm going to gloss over this because I talk about this a lot. If you guys are interested in learning more about some of these, check out my other videos. But um, I mainly want to give you the floor. The financing side of things post close or pre close mm -hmm. um, at this point is we are basically verifying documents, conditions. Yep. Okay, we've already done the pre approval. We got the loan approval. Now what we're looking at is okay. Did Kelly? Did you? provide me with uh, your most updated bank statements, your most updated pay stubs. Uh, is it true that you own this other property and these are your liabilities? Right. Oh, are you paying off this lot? So what we're doing is we're just collecting a bunch of things to finally verify this is all true. If it's all true, we finance the loan. So that's ultimately where the financing part comes in at this late stage. Um, and it's just, it's double checking and verifying. Mm -hmm. All the hard work should have been done at the beginning. And that's where you verify that nobody's went out and bought a brand new Porsche and opened yep. seven credit cards yep. and all that. Okay. Yeah. Maybe right. that's Just a good... want to reiterate that. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. It's a good, good tidbit to throw in there. Do not buy anything on credit. In fact, just don't buy anything. Yeah. You're buying a house. Focus yep. on that. Um, okay. So prior to that, um, we're kind of back into the escrow timeline when inspections are coming. Mm -hmm. I actually have a question for you. Mm -hmm. I know this is big on buyer's mind. Mm -hmm. When officially am I at risk of losing my earnest money deposit, my EMD? After those 17 days is up. So okay. when you do your inspections, you have the contract states 17 days, but you can fill in 21 days, 25 days, whatever you feel would be best for you. And then we hope that the sellers will accept that. So standard is 17. Mm -hmm. You can't ask for more. Right. Okay. Yep. You can ask for, or you can do less. If you want your offer to really pique someone's interest, you can go, I don't need 17 days. I'll do it in 10. Okay. If you, have, if you, if you okay. feel like it's a, you know, a, a pretty risky market right now and you really want this house, you don't have to do 17 days. You can put 10 days, you can put eight days, you can put one day and hope that it all works out. Uh, okay. Probably would <laughs> recommend that, but, yeah. <laughs> but the standard is 17 days. So this okay. is when you get your inspections done. And if for some reason it goes past that 17 days, then you're giving up your deposit. So what are the different contingencies mm -hmm. that go into it? We have the inspection contingency. Mm -hmm. On my side, we have the loan contingency, yep. which means basically if you can't find the financing for this property within the time frame, you can get your EMD back. If the time frame passes and the contingency is released, then you're out of luck. But right. if you're working with me, we don't get to that point. <laughs> um, are there any other contingencies that come in? There's play? a couple other that come into play, but they're kind of special situations. So let's say you're currently living in a house right now that you own and you want to sell that house before you purchase this new one up here in Amador County. That would be a contingency to sell the property that you have right now before this, this property can close basically. So you would be contingent on purchasing this house, excuse me, purchasing this house would be contingent on selling the house that you live in currently. Okay. So there's a couple different angles you can go with that. And there's a bunch of different ways that we can figure out you, we can work out you getting the house that you really want here in Amador County. It just all depends on what exactly hmm. you have going on right now. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's important because a lot of people, um, th there is safety nets. These contingencies are in there to protect the EMD. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're going to put 1% fairly regular mm -hmm. amount for mm -hmm. an earnest money. So if you're yeah. looking at a $600,000 house, that's six grand that you're putting on the line. Right. You want to exercise those contingencies. Right. So that being the case, What's your best advice to make sure that a buyer keeps their EMD mm -hmm. 
safe and secure, and they can make best use of all these contingencies? I would say know your dates. Talk to your realtor about your dates. When do I need to have my inspections done? When is this booked for? If they come on this date, when am I going to get my report back? What do you recommend for um, you know the request for repairs? Or do we ask for anything for the request for repairs? Or do we ask for a credit? You know, you guys really you really have to tighten up that timeline and have the conversation sooner rather than later. Um, and and don't wait is basically what I would say. Yeah, and I, I, I that's what I was hoping you'd say because on the lender side, what we look at is. The loan contingency is not just the loan contingency that we manage. Mm -hmm. We're also part of that inspection right. because we handle the appraisal side. We have to go to a disinterested third-party appraiser, mm -hmm. ask them to look at the property. If we lollygag and we're not ready to order the appraisal, there are some disclosures that need to go out. There are some uh, aspects of the loan approval that need to happen before we can order an appraisal. Right. If those don't get done in a timely manner, by the time we order the appraisal, we might be towards the end of not only our loan contingency, mm -hmm. but the inspection contingency. Yep. And then by the time you get to maybe asking request for repairs, you might be out of your right. contingency deadlines. Right. So uh, very, very important to be on it in on time. Um, and if you have a good realtor, and I guess <laughs> not a schmuck of a lender, but whatever I am, uh, we, we stay on top of these things for you. Um, okay, so we have that time frame. We have the, the contingencies in there. Um, opening escrow. Mm -hmm. Is there confetti? Is there a <laughs> cannon? How do you open escrow? Who opens escrow? What is how it? does it all work? Yeah, how does it work? So some properties you'll go and see in the cell, the listing agent will say, we already have escrow open with XYZ title company. As the buyer, you have the right to say, we want to use this company instead of that company. Yes, you yes, don't yes. have to go with who they're using. However, what I will say is once you transfer escrow companies, there's a little bit of a delay in yep. getting the paperwork over to a new company and introducing them and actually reopening a new escrow. If you want to, you absolutely can. But remember, those timelines are crucial to stay on top of. So keep that in mind if you decide you do want to go with an es a different escrow company. Yeah, and uh, just to advocate on behalf of a lot of times why escrow companies are already opened mm -hmm. on certain properties, even if they're not guaranteed that sale, it's purely because of timeliness. Right. Yep. It, it really is. And on top of that, as you're working with uh, your realtors and your title companies and your escrow companies, we interact with each other all yep. the time. Yep. We know how to handle each other. We know how to interact. We know how to request these things. We understand the processes. So it helps go through and keep these things together. Yep. I can share a personal story that happened last month. We had uh, a deal going with a title company that wasn't local. Mm -hmm. Not a problem, we've yep. done it many, many times. Mm -hmm. However, there was one date that was not signed properly uh -oh. and they needed to do what's called a modification mm -hmm. of note, mm -hmm. which means they get the new date, they notarize everything, they send it back to the county to re-record. Well, the problem was with this title company was they were a little bit unclear on how to handle these things within oh, Amador County. Yep. So they're trying to do things their process, and they don't realize here in Amador County, you have to physically record. <laughs> you can't just do, yep. you can't just send the documents yep. into the county recorder and expect <laughs> it to be done. So um, those are the kinds of things, and that, that's why a lot of times you do want to make sure you pick a good escrow, a good title company, yes. and you want to make sure you're getting a good deal. Yep, absolutely. Um, but absolutely. Uh, an important thing to keep in mind, contingencies and also the team that you work with. Yes, absolutely. That's a big deal. That's a very big deal. So normally, technically, the buyer would be the one to open escrow once your, your offer has been approved. But like I said, if the seller already has a company and you're fine with using their company, that's fine. Um, once escrow is open, you'll get an email notification that goes, hi, my name is Kelly, I'm your escrow officer. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. And then your escrow officer will then reach out to your realtor, probably your loan off. Everybody is all in it together, basically mm -hmm. working for you. So when you say, oh, my escrow officer, blah, 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 do you know them? We're gonna say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. know who they are. Yeah. So it's, it's one big team working for you rather than just a realtor or just a loan officer or just an escrow officer. It's all of us working collaborative, collaboratively together for you. So now here's, here's the elephant in the room question. Mm -hmm. um, if you can help us out with it. Mm -hmm. There are three different kinds of escrows, okay? We have escrow, 
being the time period mm -hmm. in which people buy a house, mm -hmm. 30 day escrow, 45 day escrow. Yes. We have an escrow company, mm -hmm. and then we also have escrow in payments. Yes. So I can handle the escrow and payments one. Okay. We kind of touched on the escrow time period. Mm -hmm. What is an escrow company? An escrow company is kind of like I mentioned before. It's like your neutral party that holds all of your paperwork, will submit all of your paperwork to who it needs to go to by the time you close, make sure everyone gets their funding from their loan or, or documentation from their loan, and then um, make sure the realtors are settled as well or their brokerages are settled as well. They verify that everything is closed, everything is recorded, everything is the way that it should be, so then you can just move into your house and not have to worry about anything else. Yeah, the easiest way to say it is they collect all the documents, they yep. collect all the money from every single party, every single person involved, yep. and then they distribute the documents and the, yes. and the money to everyone and everyone that needs it. Yep. Um, so they, they handle it so that I can't go and talk to a lender and then the lender messes someone up mm -hmm. or the realtor decides to take something yep. that you know they don't necessarily. So it's a very safe way for the borrowers right. to make sure that they're taken care of and everyone's provided what they are due. Yep. Um, and then the last type of escrow is an escrow account. Mm -hmm. um, typically, they're handled by the escrow company. Um, and this is, you gotta pay your homeowner's insurance, you gotta pay your taxes. So you can either pay your taxes twice a year, and then your insurance, you can either pay yearly, monthly, semi-monthly, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, or you can opt in to have an escrow company handle your payments. They will collect every single month an amount based on your total premium for your insurance and your total taxes. Mm -hmm. And then they'll go ahead and split it up every month and collect it for you. And they basically hold it, it's called an impound account. They impound it for you. And then when the time comes to have your property tax paid, they will take from that account and pay your property tax. When it comes time to renew your homeowner's insurance premium, they will take from the impound account and they will pay your homeowner's insurance premium. Some people can elect to not have escrow, which means they waive their mm -hmm. escrow. Mm -hmm. um, it makes their monthly payment look a lot cheaper. Yes. It makes it look a lot cheaper. Yes. But the truth is they're still going to have to pay property yep. taxes and yep. insurance. I always like to think of it as a savings account. Yeah. That's like you don't, see, you don't see it, so you don't know it's there. But then when the time comes to pay it, you're like, oh, it's already paid. Great. Yeah. <laughs> and if you are not a good steward and you know save your money mm -hmm. to be ready yes. for those payments it could really hit you hard yes. if you're not ready um opt in for the impound account then <laughs> yeah yeah and, and a lot of loan programs actually require it. yeah you yep. can't you can't like if you're a first-time home buyer and you do down payment assistance mm -hmm. you need it yep you can't yep. just go away have from to have it. it yep um okay backtracking again we're right before we open escrow mm -hmm. right before you've entered into contract what can be negotiated? That would be your actual purchase agreement. So that's the really fun, long, I think it's three or four pages now that they've condensed it into. But that's when you start going, okay, I don't need 17 days for my inspection period. I'll, I'll offer you 10. Um, I'll split the um, county transfer taxes with you hmm. instead of you paying all of them. Kind. This is where you really, um, uh, let's see, how would you phrase it? You really kind of dress up your offer, I guess is the way to put it. Oh. I'll offer you XYZ financially. We'll, we'll split the home warranty, which you should always get. We'll split the home warranty. I'll, I'll uh, split the transfer taxes with you. I'll pay for XYZ. You pay for ABC. And here's how much I'll offer you for the property. This is really where you kind of tighten everything up and make sure you have an offer that's worthwhile yeah. to the seller. Yeah. So on, on the offering table, mm -hmm. You, you've touched on, I mean, we could obviously negotiate sales price yep. for the most part. Absolutely. <clears throat> Everyone's allowed to say what they want. Doesn't mean it gets accepted, yep. but it can happen. Yep. Um, <clears throat> you can negotiate uh, who's paying what. Yes. Which title fees, which escrow fees, which yep. taxes, who's paying what. Mm -hmm. um, what else can you negotiate? You, you just negotiate contingencies. Mm -hmm. What else mm -hmm. you can go in there? Oh. <sighs> Oh, I thought of seller credits. 
You could do seller credits, yep. Um, you can ask for a seller credit in, in your original purchase agreement. A lot of times that also comes after you get your inspection and you do a request for repairs. Mm -hmm. So let's say something comes up on the home inspection report or a pest report and these people are like, the sellers are ready to go. They're halfway out the door, they're packed, they don't wanna fix anything. So instead of doing a, a repair for you, you would ask for a seller credit. Okay, well the pest inspection says it's gonna be $3,000 to take care of this dry rot. Instead of you taking care of it, I want a seller credit from you of $3,000 to take care of it myself when I get in to the property, basically. So you can do it on your original purchase agreement or you can do it once you have your inspections done also. Yeah, and one mm -hmm. cool thing about seller credits is that you can actually use them on the loan side as well. Mm -hmm. So some people do what are called buy downs. You can use some seller credits to do buy downs. Sometimes it's as simple as, uh, man, I can't really, Kelly, I can afford the down payment, but I might not be able to afford all the closing costs. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see if we can ask for some seller credits in this yep. negotiation. Yep. Um, sometimes that's a really good way. And if you're a VA buyer, I love this about VA, you can actually use some seller credits to pay off some of your debts to bring down oh, your debt to income ratio. That's great. Only VA, know. only VA. That's great though. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, so amazing. Uh, negotiation is the time where you can really get creative um, am I missing anything on the The only the other thing I wanted to mention when you say seller credits and kind of I can't afford this, but maybe we can get some seller credits. If you're worried about your closing costs, mm -hmm. and let's say you're looking at a house that's four hundred thousand dollars, your closing costs are estimated to be ten, fifteen thousand dollars, just throwing numbers out there and you can't afford that. Bump it up by that much and then mm -hmm. ask for a seller credit. Yep. So it's rolled into basically into your loan. Yeah. So now, not, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I do this a lot. Mm -hmm. um, we combine it with down payment assistance and it's like literally a zero down loan. Right. Like right. down payment and closing costs. Everyone forgets about closing costs. I know. The only caveat I say is like when you're watching this video, if you're five years in the future, it depends on your market. Mm -hmm. Right now we're seeing mm -hmm. housing prices just go up and up and up and up. But if there's ever a downturn or housing prices stay stagnant, might be an issue because that has to be supported by the appraisal. Right. right. So if I buy a four hundred thousand dollar house and I want fifteen thousand in seller credits, if the appraisal come back comes back and it's only at four ten. Right. I we can't, can't do four fifteen. Then. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. So the really numbers have strategy. to jive. They basically. have to jive. <laughs> and typically speaking, um, I, I'll put it this way: Here we are, January twenty twenty four. Mm -hmm. um, I've done this many many times, and at least since COVID. I have not had a single appraisal come in under value. That's great. So it is a very, very smart strategy. Thank you. Thank yeah, you for bringing it. Absolutely. Um, anything else in the negotiation side? Oh, you can do, um, you can ask, oh, no, that would be on the seller side actually. I mean, if you are a seller and you're watching the video and you go, I want to sell this house and I want to move into this house, but by the time it closes, I'm going to need like three days to get three or four days to get my stuff out of there. You can ask for a rent back. So you can negotiate yeah. your rent back into your contract too. So don't think that once escrow closes, that's it. Like once it re it's recorded, you better pack your stuff and get out of there because there is a part on your contract or your, or your residential purchase agreement that says technically when possession starts for your buyers. So keep that in mind. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be the second it records or by 5 p.m. the day that it records. You can negotiate that as well. It can work for everyone if you have the right realtor. Yeah. <laughs> this one. Um, okay, I'm, I know we've missed something in mm -hmm. the negotiation parts. Um, if you have more questions or there's something you think we missed, give us a call. We can talk about it, answer it. I'm sure we have the answers. We just, we talk a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the questions are infinite. They could go, I mean, oh, there's gosh. so many things that go into it. So many negotiations and paperwork and terms and phrases and the numbers and the, the all the different hands in the pot. So yeah. that's what we're here for. So you guys don't have to do it on your own and you Never have someone that's, that's educated and knows where to, where to guide you. Yeah. So we get into the house hunt now. Okay, mm -hmm. we're backtracking. We're in the house hunt stage. You found a house, you want to make an offer on it. What exactly do you need to make an offer? And what do you expect if I make an offer? How long do I bite my nails for? <laughs> so usually um, the sellers need to respond to your offer within three days of you submitting it. Okay. Now keep in mind the day that you submit it is day zero. Interesting. Yes. Okay. So because if you think about it, if you submitted it at noon on monday that only gives them two and a half they would have to it's just a weird dynamic so gotcha. the day you submit it is day zero 
Tuesday would be day one, so they would need to respond to you by Thursday. Which is funny, because on the loan side, whenever we talk about days, mm -hmm. the day we issue is day one. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. so it's a very... Another dynamic. On some things, just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is why you need a realtor and why you need a lender. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. All right, well, so. and, the, and the other part of it, too, is if you're on the phone with your realtor at 7 o'clock at night, and they're like, okay, I got this ready, you want to sign it? And you send it over at 7... Yeah, who's going to look at who's it? Who's going to look at it at 7, 8 o'clock when they're eating dinner, getting ready for bed, whatever it may be. So just to make it fair to everyone, it's day zero when you okay. submit the offer. So I submit Monday. I Tuesday's day one. Wednesday's mm -hmm. two. Thursday's day three. I should hear an answer right. Thursday. Right. Okay. At the latest. Are, yeah. there, is it uh, weekends are a part of that? Not a part of that? Technically, they're not a part of that because okay. even if you accept an offer on Saturday morning, you can't open escrow until Monday. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Something to consider there. Okay, so um, I submit an offer. Mm -hmm. I have three days for them to respond. Mm -hmm. What are the various avenues that a seller can do? They got an offer in their hands. What can they do? So the real their realtor will go over all of their offers with them. Hopefully yours being the first and the only. Mm -hmm. But they'll review all the offers. And if they go, you know, yeah, the terms look great, but the offer is a little bit lower than what I wanted they'll counter your offer. So you'll get a one page or two page document that basically says seller counter offer number one, instead of the purchase price being 400,000, we'd like you to pay 410,000. 410, mm -hmm. And um, you pay for all of the home warranty and we'll pay for all of the county tracks, you know, transfer fees, something yeah. of that nature. It's kind of, this is what you asked for, this is what I'm gonna counter you back, basically. Let's meet in the middle. And then you can go back and go, okay, I'll offer you 405 and all, all the other terms are fine. Okay. So it kind of it's kind of like like ping pong. It goes back and forth. Yeah. So th there's basically three options. They can take what you offer on mm -hmm. the first go. They can deny you outright. Yep. Or they can ping pong. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, so in terms of making an offer, mm -hmm. you're the realtor. Yes. I want to buy a house. Mm -hmm. What do I need to give you to make sure that one, you can make an offer, mm -hmm. and two, it's a good offer. Mm -hmm. I need a copy of your pre-qualification letter that verifies how much money you can actually afford, how much Nora has approved you for. Um, and then we'll draft up your purchase agreement and all of that will go over to the listing agent to review and, and go over with their client, with the sellers. So it's literally just a pre-approval letter is all you need to go armed mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's yep. pretty simple. It is pretty simple. Oh, if only we had a guy that could make I it know. easy. <laughs> I know, I um, know. You get to do all the hard work and I just send a couple dollars. Yeah, sure, right. <laughs> Sure. Like I said earlier, before we were on camera, I, you couldn't pay me to be a realtor. Um, so now then we obviously backtrack. Well, actually, no, we forgot. What makes a good offer? Look at, the, look at the listing price. A good offer would be something that's worth someone's while. So if you put yourself in the seller's shoes is basically what I tell my buyers. If you have a house that's listed at $400,000 and someone offers you three fifty, dollars knowing that looking at least looking from the outside, no inspections yet, it's in decent condition and maybe it's worth $400,000 and you offer them 350. How much time do we want to waste throwing papers back and forth if you know that that offer is probably not going to get approved? Well, I want to, I want to play devil's advocate for a sure. second. How do I know that house is worth 400? I can feel like it's only worth 300. That's true. I can I That's can see true. that it hasn't sold or it's sold 3 times in 5 mm -hmm. years. Mhm. Mm at that point, that's when your realtor should be pulling comps for you, which is basically going, this is the house you're looking at. It's listed at 400,000. Here are six or seven other properties that have sold in this general area. And this is similar to the property that you're looking at. That's key, similar to the property that you're looking at. And this is what they sold for. You're offering 350, but maybe we should go 375, 380 to get a better gotcha. grasp on on their eyes basically to have the sellers actually look at it and maybe counter you rather than just completely go no okay so, so two parts to this that just mm -hmm. came to mind it obviously stresses the fact that working with a uh, savvy realtor <laughs> is a very good idea because you do the diligence mm -hmm. to know if this is even worthwhile right because I'm sure you've seen it. There are houses that are out there that there's no way. In. The emotion, I call that the emotional cost. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so th there are those emotional cost homes. Um, but also at the same time, uh, the other thought I had is with the appraisal. Mm -hmm. So if there is a $400,000 house and it really is only worth three fifty, mm -hmm. if you do get into it in a moment for the appraisal, and the appraisal comes in at three sixty, three fifty, whatever, and the sales price at four hundred. dollars mm -hmm. 
one, you as the buyer, you get to see, ah, okay, I don't necessarily have something that's worth this much. Mm -hmm. Do I want to go back and renegotiate or do mm -hmm. I want to walk away? Right. And then at the same time, you have a little bit of cannon fodder to go back and renegotiate if you want. Basically, an appraisal would be your protection on whether or not you're making right. a good investment. Right. Flip yep. it around. I've had this happen. Flip it around. Let's say the appraisal comes back and you got a smoking deal. Yep. Yep. You as a buyer, <laughs> you do not need to share that appraisal yes. with yes. the seller. That is yours. Yeah. So I, I've had a real life scenario. I loved it. I was so happy for this borrower. <laughs> she bought a house. We we negotiated at two fifty. Mm -hmm. Okay. A little bit of a sweetheart deal. Needed work. She'd been living there for a few years. And when uh, we did the appraisal, it came in at three forty. No way. Yeah. So I, wow. I was just like, oh my gosh, you just made $90,000. Steal. <laughs> you bought a house and made money. <laughs> exactly. And that, that was, that's what I told her. Because she actually, she actually called me and she said one time, you know, Nor, I, the monthly payment's a little higher than I want. I can afford my rent, but I don't know if I can go higher than that. I said, mm -hmm. look, I'm call her Becky or Jessica or whatever her name. <laughs> Pick a name. Jessica. <laughs> If you can't afford this house in six months' time, mm -hmm. sell it and cash out. Yeah, absolutely. And then you can use that money either to buy something else mm -hmm. or invest it in something else to save. Yep. So, um, yeah, an appraisal is a really good protection and a really great negotiation tool. Absolutely. Um, okay. And now we kind of get to the start of things um, and the pre-approval. Mm-hmm. It's not always that you have buyers come walk in your door and say, here's my pre-approval. Can we yep. go house hunting? Yep. What usually is? It's usually, oh, um, we're ready to buy a house. Or we saw this house and we really like it. Can we go take a look at it? I wish it was that easy. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. Because <laughs> a lot of the times, too, if, if we're looking at a high dollar amount house, a lot of the times that you can't even see it unless you have a pre-qualification letter, and that's a seller's request. Yeah. It's not that I don't want to show you. It's the seller's requesting. If Unless you have a pre-approval letter, please do not even ask to see the, the property. Yeah. <laughs> as 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 mean as that sounds almost but that's just what it is you know people don't want to leave their house and get their house cleaned up to to find out like oh you're not even qualified like why did yeah. you know it almost seems like a waste of time for them yeah um and we don't want to do that for anyone and we don't want to make anyone mad and we want we don't want you to fall in love with something and then find out that you're not pre-qualified oh you how can't many times it. how right. many times have you had that story? right Gosh. it's it's so sad yeah and and at least on on that side of things mm -hmm talk about the financial aspect a lot of people have misconceptions about how loans work i bet some of you that are watching this video right now you think you need 20 percent down mm -hmm. you might even think you need five percent down mm -hmm. but if i were to tell you there's options for three percent three and a half percent zero yep one percent yep there's so many different options and so many different ways to skin this cat that getting pre-approved is it is a necessity right it, is it absolutely is. And the other part of it, too, is like I said, you don't want to go look at a house that's worth $375,000 because you assume that's what you can be approved for just based on whatever logic you may have. And then you fall in love with it. You really want it. You want to put the offer in. And then Nora tells you, sorry, we can only approve you for $300,000. Do you have an extra seventy five k in cash or whatever it may be? And then you're just heartbroken because you fell in love with a house that you can't afford. So that's kind of like your, your framework of your entire purchase is getting that pre-qualification and knowing exactly or pre-approval and knowing exactly what you can afford. Yeah. And I will also say, because I've seen this happen too, if you get pre-approved for 375, that doesn't mean you have to buy a house at 375. No. You can go no. lower than that. If you have some cash, you can go a little bit higher than that. It's totally up to you, but you have to remember that the, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the financial number that you're approved for is based on your debt to income ratio at that time and your income itself, correct? Pretty much. Okay, so if something happens and let's say you or your spouse lose your job or you get a new job and it's less money than it was before and then you get, you're still able to purchase this house but your income's a little bit less, what's gonna happen when you go to make the payments? Or if your debt to income ratio is great and then you decide to move in and buy all new appliances on a credit card. Are you going to make your house payment and also pay your credit card? Bill? Yeah. You know, there's so many different variables. You have to be careful with that. So just know that when they give you a number, it doesn't have to be buy a house at this number. Yeah. It can be around it. It could be lower than that. It could be 
you know. Yeah, and, and we've seen it many times. Like, I'll write a pre-approval letter uh, that says 400000 mm-hmm. But then they say, like, ah, I really like this house for three hundred. It's like, okay, well, yeah, you yeah. can totally go and you're fine with that. offer yeah. 300000 yeah. Or you can kind of leave the four hundred and show that you're a really strong buyer. Right. Or you can not give them the idea that you can buy a lot more and make them think, ah, maybe we'll right. get more right. out of them. So, yeah. you know, there's different ways to negotiate. And that's why a realtor is really important. Because you'll be able to get a read on the other realtor. You'll be able to get a read on the other seller. Because, mm-hmm. um, correct me if I'm wrong, buyers and sellers don't talk to each other. They do not. They should not. Unless both of the agents are there, they yeah. should not. Yeah. Because what happens is people start promising things, and then they, yep. they don't have anything in writing, and he said, and she said. And, and is it lawful? Oh. Is it, right. is it right. agreeable? So, right. Um, the last thing I want to talk about on this pre-approval thing um, is... Based on today's market condition, mm-hmm. um, you've heard it a lot. I'm going to wait till spring. Yeah. I'm going to wait until interest rates come down. Oh. The one thing I want to talk about. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're both feeling it. We're both feeling it. The one thing I want to talk about, though, on this is why approval, pre-approval is so important today, mm-hmm. even if you're going to buy then, even when interest rates come down, even when you buy in the spring. Um, ultimately... When interest rates come down and when spring rolls around, there's going to be a lot of buyers, right? Yep. A whole banana bunch of buyers. So the idea about getting pre-approved is to strengthen your offer as much as possible. Now, you mentioned Mm pre-qual. I say pre-approve. There is a difference between the two. Yes, there is. A pre-qual, very simply put, is you talked with a lender, you ran a scenario, you gave them as truthfully as you can, your income, mm-hmm. your assets, and potentially even your credit. And based on those three things, oh, sounds like you could get a home loan. But a pre-approval is the next step forward. Right. Income, assets, credit, but we dig deeper. We verify all three of those things and we determine, are there any debts that are hidden in the background? Yep. Are the assets exactly as they say? Is everything sourced and seasoned properly? Is the income verifiable? Does mm-hmm. it have enough history? If those three things can be fully verified, then we issue pre-approval, which is way stronger than a pre-qualification. And you could take it one more step further and you could do a fully underwritten pre-approval, which means I send it to an underwriter. And the nice part about that is as long as you get your inspections done and your insurance handled and everything else, Mm -hmm. you can close escrow in a flash. See? Yep. Yep. And that's where on your purchase agreement you go, I don't even need 30 days for escrow. Let's yeah. do 15 days or whatever it may be. So that's what that's what I meant when I said there's so many different variables to this entire situation because A depends on B, B depends on C, C is yeah. going to go back to A. Like there's so many different variables in this and there's so many different hands in the pot, but they're all good hands that you want to have in the pot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Kelly, what what's your big advice to people that are either looking to buy now or saying, I'm going to wait. So one thing I would say is I heard a lot of people say, I'm going to wait till the interest rates go down. Well, a lot of people said that when the rates were at five and then we jumped up to almost eight. And I well, bet we were those, above eight. Yeah. We were above. Yeah. Yeah. And I bet those people that were at five and going, oh, I'm going to wait till the rates were, go down. We're like, oh, no. Oh, shoot. Yeah. And I'm curious to know actually if those people have actually purchased a home or if they're still waiting for the rates to go down because it, it shifts every day. You never know what's going to happen. It shifts every single day. So when you get to a point where you can get pre-approved for something and it's, you know, you're good to go, take the opportunity to really go out and look and see what's out there with what you've been pre-approved for because you never know. Yeah. And with the way historically houses work, mm-hmm. um, and, and this is really just going to be me talking on an investment standpoint. Some people are going to hear these words, they're going to take them to heart, and they're going to run with it. Mm -hmm. That will be the slim minority. Mm -hmm. The vast majority will say, yeah, but. Mm -hmm. Okay? Whatever the but is, it's it's a little bit of a trouble. Okay? So here's the pure investment side of things. On average, homes appreciate about 3 to 4% every single year. During COVID, we saw close to 10% appreciation for two years straight. We had the slightest, ever so slightest dip in home values for a few months between COVID Mm -hmm. and the current market that we're in, the downturn. Okay. Even since February 2023, 
we have seen home values increase. Yep. And since October of 2022, we have had record high interest rates in the past 30 years. And it's been a continuous rise. Mm -hmm. So from October 2023 all the way until October, sorry, October 2022 until October 2023, mm -hmm. we've had a slow rise in interest rates. And you would imagine home prices mm -hmm. go down. Yep. They went up. Yep. They kept going up. And we look at it and there was an annualized increase of six something percent of home values last year. Oh, wow. Six percent. So that's double what the market normally does. Yeah. yeah. This year we are on track and it's estimated to be somewhere between five to 10% increase wow. in appreciation. So you think, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna wait. Interest rates right now are at 6.6. .6. They came down from eight. We're at 6.6 right. .6 right now. Today's January 24th. They could go lower. I'm waiting for 5.5. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. If it takes a year, two years, that's no problem. Except for the fact that house <laughs> this is going to be worth a I was lot just going to say, you're going to be paying a lot more for the house. Yeah. 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 Now, this, this is where it becomes that investment thing. Few will actually take it and run with it. What's that? Marry the house? I was just going to say, yeah, marry the house, date the rate. That's all. That, that's really what it boils down yep. to. On an investment side of things, 40 times more wealth. 40. Wow. The average American homeowner has 40 times more wealth than the average American renter. And you might be thinking, no, no, no. That's because homeowners, they could afford to buy the house in the first place mm -hmm. and renters could not. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Part of the American dream has always been home ownership. Yep. And the number one, look it up, don't even listen to me. Look it up after, <laughs> pause the video or whatever. The number one investment vehicle in America has and will be for a long time in the future, buying a home. Mm -hmm. So that being said, here at Homestead, we are doing <laughs> shameless plug time. <laughs> we are doing an I will wait for spring special. Um, if you come and you get pre-approved here at Homestead um, between the months of January and February 2024, we are going to pay for your appraisal at the close of escrow. So that way you have even less to worry about and you're going to get a killer interest rate if they do come down. You're gonna get a free appraisal. You're gonna be in the house of your dreams mm -hmm. so that when the time comes, you can refinance, marry the house, date, date the, the rate. rate. Yep. Let's help you do that. And then of course, if you're ever looking in, where do you service? It's not just Amador. I'm all of Amador County. So I actually live in Pioneer. I like to stick to my, my little community, but I will go anywhere in Amador County. Um, technically I'm licensed in California. Yeah. So you call me and I can be there. But my niche is Amador County. Yeah. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for listening in. If you have any questions, feel free to call us here at Homestead Mortgage. Absolutely, you're going to find Kelly's information at the bottom of this video, plastered throughout this video, <laughs> different places like that. Um, but if you have any questions, give a contact call to either of us, Smoke Signal, uh, Carrier Pigeon, whatever yes. you need, we will be there to answer it. Absolutely. Anything else? I think that's it. All right. My voice hurts. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Take care. All righty.